accompanied by Letitia from Yonder, and I'm really looking forward to the session today. We did a number of sessions last year, and they were fantastic, with lots of opportunities for us to take the information and utilize it in our business so that we can grow, grow, grow. So today we're going to be talking about what's the difference between live chat and chatbots. So these are really, these are a lot of tools that are coming about, and maybe some of the language is new to us. So let's find out some more information about this topic. As a reminder, Letitia is great at answering questions throughout this session and at the end. Would you prefer at the end or throughout is okay? No, nah, just, just butt in whenever, just to ask questions. It's, okay. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So use the comment section, the chat function or the Q&A function. I know that a lot of you folks have been tuning in on our social media channels besides being here on Zoom. And that is awesome. Just so happy to have you here with us. Um, do make sure that you register to Digital Boost, though, at digitalboost.co.nz because you'll miss out on all of the special offers and the competitions if you're not registered. So without further ado, thanks, Letitia. Thanks so much for joining us. Awesome, cool. I'm just going to share my screen for you guys um, and it will come up. Thanks for having me, Anna Murray. Uh, the, the pleasure is always all mine, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and as she said, just pop in whenever you have questions. Um, and I'm going to try not to talk too fast because I know I get super excited and talk really fast. So I will try and um, slow down a bit. But please just remind me if you need me to. Um, so as Anna Murray just said, we are going to talk about the difference between live chat and chatbots today. Um, actually, one of the reasons that we identified this as a talking point in Digital Boost is that on our website, we actually, it's our most commonly visited blog article, which is um, what's the difference between a live chat and chatbots. And when I'm talking to lots of businesses, they sometimes refer to one when they're meaning the other. So I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to um, dive a little bit deeper into what the differences are um, and the pros and cons of it. So today um, I am going to do why. We're, gonna, we're talking about them, so I'm actually going to start with the why. Um, so what is live chat? And then what are chatbots? So not all chatbots work the same. So I'm going to give you a brief outline of the differences between chatbots um, so you understand a little more about how each of them work behind the scenes. Um, and then I'm going to um, go into the pros and cons of chatbots and live chats for your business. Um, and yeah, if you guys want to ask a, like a question about your business, go ahead. If I don't know it, I'll refer you to someone that does, um, does do that. So that's what we're going to cover today. So before I dive in, I thought I'd better just introduce myself if you haven't watched some of these um, episodes that I've done with Anna Mari before. Um, my name is Letitia and I live in Taranaki, New Zealand. So we're currently in the process of tidying up a lot of debris around the place after the wind this weekend. But um, I'm one of the founders of and owners of a software business called Yonder HQ. Um, at Yonder, my role involves sales, and I'm also involved in the marketing and customer success management of our company. Um, I'm not the tech kind of person, but because I talk about it all the time, um, I, 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 know, I know sort of enough to be able to, to present today to you with um, what the differences between them are. Um, and a little bit of a quick thing that if you're wondering what Yonder does, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what it is. So Yonder is a marketing platform that helps businesses to automate their business, um, automate business processes and gather more customer data. So within our marketing platform, users have access to a range of tools that help boost their sales and support their marketing. Um, and development teams from live chats and AI chatbots like what's on your screen to customer surveys, review gathering, review widgets and website quizzes to offer personalized recommendations, as well as review management and data analysis. So all this sits within the Yonder platform and is available to businesses. Um, so the main industries that we work with at Yonder and Yonder's platform has been built for are tourism, such as accommodation and activity providers, professional services, hairdressers, beauty salons, professional, uh, professional services, as well as personal, as well as lawyers and accountants. Um, and we also work with um, agencies to put help them put it onto other their customers' sites. 
Um, so the Yonder chatbots have become, we and our chatbots specifically have become very specialized in the tourism space. And when I'm going through today, you'll pick up why that is the case and why we've actually specialized in the tourism space. So enough about me. Um, we're going to dive into why live chat and chatbots. So why am I even bothering to tell you guys about them today? Um, so customer expectations are sort of changing. And as a business, I'm sure you're sick of hearing that everyone is embracing digital and you should do the same. But how people are leading their lives and the expectations that this builds in people, um, thanks to technology, has really changed. So some of the biggest, um, biggest platforms in the world, so the Netflix, or the Ubers, or the Spotify's, so um, yeah, think big, they have one thing in common, and that is that they're all on demand and they're all instant. So um, customer expectations of customer service is changing thanks to the likes of these guys, um, but also how you run your business. So you're required um, as a business, and I'm sure you guys have been sick of hearing this over the last year, but that um, your business needs to be more personalized and um, digital. And a part, and part of that comes the immediate service or immediacy that people are now expecting. So with live chat and chatbots, um, they are able to give and meet these expectations um, and, and sort of, yeah, make people think. So the customer is about the immediacy, the digital, and the 24-7 um, is the three, well, three of the top ones. But um, what is another thing that they really want to do is that they want to, and, and most businesses know it when they've installed them, but to convince businesses is a different story, but it does boost your website engagement and online sales. Um, you talk to, and, and I, what I would recommend to any business that is looking into live chat or chatbots is to talk to businesses that use them already and how they use them and how they measure and are able to see the increase in website engagement and sales. So they're the two biggest, uh, biggest reasons why we are looking at live chat and chatbots at the moment. Um, and since it's a digital boost one, it kind of makes sense because it's all about being digital and meeting those customer expectations. Um, so just a quick roundup of why um, some, some sort of results that businesses see from these live chats and chatbots. Um, and these are our customers, but there's other examples out there if you're looking at it, that businesses we work with experience up to 20% increase in their online sales by having a chatbot available um, to answer their questions or their customer website questions 24 seven. Um, and then they steer them towards booking. So for example, Polynesian Spa here have got a chatbot that answers 86% of their customer questions and their um, engagement and um, their website conversion rate is extremely high. Um, and then we've got the International Antarctic Centre down, um, down south who have 10% of their chats click their booking systems and go through and book. Um, they've tried and they use website messenger or Facebook messenger chat as well, but when they put it on their website, they actually experienced a 40% increase in it. Um, so those engagement rates and those numbers really drive your website performance. And so that's really pushes to why we do what we do and, and why I'm talking to you guys today about these tools that you could use in your business. Um, so before I start explaining, and tell me if I'm if I'm going too fast. Sorry, but um, before I start explaining what a live chat is, I think it's worth pointing out, um, like just what it looks like, in case you're sort of still sitting on the fence about what it is. Um, these little widgets here, you'll see on a website, um, and they're usually down the bottom right hand corner of a website. Um, now, don't be don't be put off if some of them do both a little message like this one here that you can see here that shows things. And at this stage, you might not know if it's a live chat or a chat bot, but um, they can do this sort of thing. Or if you have seen or been on the warehouse one, whoop, sorry, I've just gone a little bit further. Um, they can look like this. So a little tab down the bottom that just says chat now. So when you land on a website, you're not 100% sure to start with 
if it's a live chat or a chat bot, but that's sort of what they look like if you are still sort of wondering what it is. Um, the reason that they tend to be on the bottom right hand side is because it's sort of become standardized and an expectation that that's what where, where they are. Um, but it doesn't have to be like that. You can actually put them on the left hand side if you want to. And I can't remember where Oscar is in Air New Zealand at the moment, but sometimes he's he's around the place as well. So what's live chat? It's super, super easy. Um, so when a visitor lands on your website and types a message into the little chat widget is the one that I showed you before, all the different types that you can get, they're answered by an actual person sitting at the other end of the chat software. So they're answered by you as a business. Okay, so I would type in a little message and then you would get it at the other end and reply. So I've just taken a few screenshots here of the different, different sorts of live chats that you can start. Um, live chat very much gives people the freedom to ask whatever questions they like, and it relies on the, your staff to be responsive and reply as soon as they, they can. So remember that immediacy, we've, we, I just touched on it before really briefly about why these, um, this, these tools are so important to you now. And it's, it's, yeah, it's really important that your staff jump on or you jump on as a business owner and answer these questions straight away because it is live chat. Um, now, our research shows at Yonder that your staff or yourself will generally have about one minute to answer these conversations and respond to a person um, in live chat before they will either close the box or give up waiting for you. So your time frame isn't very big, but, um, but yeah, you do have that opportunity. Um, and then I just thought I would touch on a few things to keep in mind for live chat. Um, so things that I want um, and, and what you need to consider if you're looking at live chat. And I will go through this a little bit um, in more detail because we're going to look at the pros and cons of it later on. But um, what you need to look through, look, uh, think about for your live chat are what are your goals? Um, so, and how are you going to measure its success? So um, think, when I say goals, um, this is the first question that I ask people when I'm um, talking to a business is why do you want to put live chat onto your website? Is it to boost your sales or is it to reduce your phone calls and help your customer service team? Or is it to direct people to a certain place in your website? So um, make sure that you have, and it could be all three of them, it, and it could be multiple ones, but try and break them down into actual goals that you want your live chat to achieve. And then think about how you're going to measure it. Um, because you need to be able to, I, I'm a big person and you don't just adopt technology for the technology's sake, you adopt it because it actually improves your business. And so you need to be able to prove to yourself or to your management team how that actually improve, is improving your business by having this live chat on your um, computer. Um, another thing that you need to consider when you're thinking about live chat is that I would suggest you nominate a person in your business to be available to answer um, customer chats as soon as possible after a website visitor initiates a chat. So um, again, I'll just reiterate that you've got that minute sort of time frame to be able to jump on and answer them before they might go away or they may come back, but it's very likely that you've, you, you just haven't answered fast enough. Um, so one of the tips that I would give you guys for using live chat is um, to train your staff to do it really well is to start um, typing, say just like, hello, thanks for your question. And then just do say a dot, 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 and then fire that off quickly to the person and then start typing your body of your answer to the question that they've asked so that they look and they can get an answer immediately from you. They know that you're there waiting for them. And then they are more well, more than uh, well, much highly more likely to wait around for you to then get the rest of your, your answer. Okay. So that's just a little tip with how to, how to do it and, um, and get your people engaged faster. Um, if you don't have staff to man it, um, oh, so another thing that you've got to be worried about, um, ensure the right person has been allocated the responsibility. So um, often we've come across businesses that perhaps 
it's their sales team that have been put in charge of it or it's their customer service team where it should be the other way around. So again, it goes back to what your goals were with chat. Is it to convert people to book something with you or is it just a customer service inquiry? And if that's the case, it needs to go to the customer service team. But if it's a real sales tool that you're looking at, for, for, uh, looking at it for, then consider your sales team actually has the right um, uh, the skills to be able to do it more correctly than they, your customer service team. Um, also check that the person that is doing it is really good at writing uh, or like typing fast and has got good spelling um, because sometimes when you are doing the live chats they come through you push set, you push enter and then look back and you think oh okay I just shouldn't have said that <laughs> um, and then if you don't have staff to man your live chat um, and you're at, and it's out of hours and you haven't got anyone out of hours doing it, then make sure that you have been able to set up messages to tell people that there is no one online and lots of live chat um, software does this as it just says there's no one online yet. And but then what we recommend is that you really put down when they can expect you to be online or when the best time is to contact you online or how can they can leave some information so that you can get back to them. And again, that goes back to having the right person allocated to take responsibility for the software to say, okay, well, who, who's going to follow up these live chats that we missed um, because it was out of hours or someone was busy answering the phone and the computer was sitting there. But when you're answering the phone, you don't usually have the ability to type as well. So these are little things that you just need to keep in mind. Um, and then again, I'm just going to reiterate, and I've reiterated it on this little slide that I've got for you guys, is how are you going to track your ROI on the live chat? So are you going to track it in maybe a CRM system if um, you have sales go through and then you log them in there? Or are you going to do an Excel spreadsheet? Or where are you going to actually record things um, that come through and make sure that you've got a return on investment of your live chat? Um, and, it, and it's not so much, um, it might be that, your live chat and I go into a little bit one of the pros of it is that you can get free versions of the live chat but it's your time that your staff is doing to answer them is still an investment in your staff time and so how do you get return on that staff time that they are using okay so um before I move on to chatbots and a little bit about chatbots I wanted just to make sure that and just point out that um, and make a note that often businesses that use a live chat um, system will pop up a little box like this before they start or ask people to do the live chat, which is um, just a way to gather that information about people beforehand. Um, and sometimes it's because there's no one actually online to do it to start with. Um, but be aware that um, a lot of our research is showing that the drop off rate um, is quite substantial when you ask people to give you their details before they start asking their question. Um, and that might be a privacy thing, is what our um, hypothesis is, is that people don't, these days specifically, don't like giving away their personal details if they don't need to. Um, and so, yeah, if you've, if you've got something like this in place um, for your live chat, that's, that's perfectly fine, all good, but just be aware that it may um, reduce the engagement of your live chat at certain times. Um, so if you can have someone there answering immediately, it's just a little bit better. Okay. Uh, any any questions now? Just throw them up there. Otherwise, I'm going to keep going into what a chatbot is um, and why they're different from live chat. So I hear lots of people say, "Oh yeah, I've got a I've got a chatbot on my um I've got a chatbot on my website, and I'll take a look, and it will be live chat." and they'll be answering at the other end. So there is a big difference between live chat and chatbots. Um, so with a chatbot, the basic difference is that live chat is a real person responding to a website visitor's chat message. However, when you've got a chatbot message, it's automatically answered by the chatbot or the software that you're running. Um, so chatbots are like a virtual assistant for your customer service or customer experience touch points, okay? Um, but how a chatbot both welcomes and answers someone is actually quite different depending on what type of chatbot they are and how they're built. 
So not all chatbots are built the same, which then I think confuses people a lot because they're not too sure if they're talking to a real person or a chatbot at times. Um, so what I thought I might do is just dive in very quickly um, to look at look at the differences between logic-based chatbots versus AI chatbots. And then, and then we're going to go on to the pros and cons of the live chat versus chatbots, but you'll be able to understand the difference between the logic versus AI chatbots. Um, so this is very high level. It's not, I'm not getting into the nitty gritty of it, but I thought it'd be a good way for you guys to understand the difference between them um, when you're comparing live chat versus chatbots. And then when you're comparing the chatbots, you need to be able to compare different ones as well. Um, so the logic-based chatbots, um, I like to think of as menu driven. So don't, don't freak out with the picture that I've put in front of you guys there. Um, think of them like one of those phone systems when you ring up and they ask, um, can you press one for sales, two for customer service? These chatbots are very similar. So it means as a business, um, you can set up um, the menus and the pathways that you want your customers to go down and they just work through their menus to get to where they need to go. So they're logic-based chatbots on a very basic level. Um, so AI chatbots are a little bit more technical as in the AI chatbots are software applica um, applications that use artificial intelligence and natural language processing to understand what a human wants or their intent. And then it guides them to their desired outcome with very little work from the website user or the person that asked the question to start with. So it means that a customer can lead the conversation more than the business leading the conversation when you think about these ones here where a business very much leads the conversation yes, no, what would you like to do? Whereas these ones are very much more of a customer-led conversation. So then they're, they're not restrained by a menu. So with AI, you can build a massive breadth of knowledge and, and get the customer straight to what they want, um, which can is, is becomes really difficult if you are a business that has a large base of knowledge that you need to give to your customers on your website. Um, so, for example, in tourism, um, these, these sort of logic-based chatbots are really difficult because if you think of a um, Polynesian spa, for example, because I've given you that example, or a zip lining or a whitewater rafting, there are just so many questions that a business or a, a website user or a customer is going to ask a business that it doesn't actually fit these, these logical-based menus or menu-based, menu-driven chatbots. Whereas with the artificial intelligent ones, this customer here can ask such a broad range of questions and they get their answer very quickly versus having to go through a number of steps to get to their answer. Um, what I will make um, sort of touch on though is um, what you do need to be aware of with AI chatbots is that they do need your customer data to make them really smart. So they do need lots of conversations coming in to make them smart. So um, at Yonder, for example, um, we specialize, and this is where I said I'd touch on why we specialize in tourism chatbots, is because um, we have been able to use all the data from all the tourism businesses that we use to build really, really smart um, chatbots for, for multiple businesses. Um, because they're trained from our library of customer conversations that comes through. So for other types of businesses that don't, if you don't have access to a library of um, customer data specific for your industry, then you just have to build it up yourself, um, which just takes more time to do. So it's definitely um, not impossible, but it just takes more time to do it. Um, but what we suggest that is if you have already had like a live chat and that you can actually use that historical data to start building up your chatbots. And, um, and use that to make them smarter, quicker. So um, to, un to, to help you understand that a little bit more, oh, I'm gonna see if this works. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Yeah, um, I was just gonna run you through this video of um, how what I mean by data. So um, this is the Yonder dashboard. And 
Um, it's a little simpler than other systems. We've removed the need for businesses to get technical with their natural language processing and things. So we've made it simple by you get to set up your own questions. So for example, we are going to teach this chatbot when you're building it to make a question up. And this question is gonna be, um, what are your opening times? Simple question, and it's a question that lots of businesses get, right? Now that's one way that someone can ask that question. And then I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna very quickly put in the, the reply to that. Um, now, if you, uh, when you do, do do these replies and if you do build your own chatbot, make sure that your reply is as robust as possible and is really clear what they can do if, then, if you're not open during that time. So um, here you just need to contact, I, I, don't, I can't remember what it is, contact us out of hours, um, please phone or something. So you just need to give them options for it. Now, once you've set up this question, this chatbot would now answer this question. But to do it really well, it needs more data to be able to recognize when this question comes up. So in here on the left-hand side, you can see here that we're just adding other ways that people can ask the same question. And this is what I mean by a little bit of data coming into the system. So this is a really basic example. I'm not showing you natural language processing. Um, this is, this is we've sort of made this more basic, but basically it's an example of how AI chatbots need to be trained or they need to be given data to be really smart. So these are just different ways that you can ask the same question. And that way it's a lot more likely to match the answer or the chatbot is much more likely to match the answer to your question for your business. So that's just one way that I wanted to be able to show you what I meant by customer data coming into the system. Um, because often um, businesses think that um, AI chatbots learn by themselves and they do and they can, but there is some human side to it as well. Um, I'm just going to stop this one and shoot back to the presentation. Um, so... I've given you a very high level um, brief or overview on different chatbots, um, the logic-based versus AI chatbots and some things to keep in mind for both of them. Um, if you're considering them for your business, it will pay to do a little bit more research um, and talk to other businesses that are using them um, and compare the live chat to the chatbots because some businesses, it does suit better to do one or the other. Um, and these are some things that I want you guys to keep in mind if you are doing the research into it. And um, oopsie daisy, sorry, I keep touching my screen. And what you're going to do. So um, again, it goes back to same as live chat. What are your goals? And how are you going to measure its success? Um, so again, think about your customers and your website. What's your goal of your website? And why would you be putting a chatbot onto it? Um, same as for a live chat. Um, if like, again, it's about, are you capturing leagues? Are you converting people to a sale, helping as many people as possible, reducing stress on your customer service team? So these are just some of the reasons that we hear for people installing these tools on their website. Um, not all chatbots are built the same. So keep that in mind, look at your goals and consider what type of chatbot would suit your business. If live chat doesn't, and you do need a chatbot, then what type is best for you? Um, if you've got a very basic business, um, if you're a professional service and you just have one service that you offer your customers, then a logic-based chatbot would probably be very, very effective to just direct them to where they need a book for your appointment or um, get you to give them a call back. So consider, consider your business before you look into the different, uh, as you're looking into the different types. Um, nomin again, nominate a person to ensure your chatbot and ensure it's continued training and success. So I just showed you that video on what I meant by customer data when it needs to be trained in terms of what sort of questions or data you need to put into that system so that it gives really um, good matches for people when they ask questions. So um, again, just nominate someone that will take responsibility for it and keep it, an eye on it and check it out. It's not, um, oh, and some businesses do, they just plug it in and leave it, but there's usually a training training period with a chatbot where they need to need to be content, like a little bit of data always added in to a point where it's actually performing really well. So just keep that in mind and get someone to do that. 
Um, and you also need to allow time to build and train your chatbot or get a service provider to do it for you. So um, we give business, some businesses, we give self-service completely and they go and build their own. Others, we sit down and actually build it out for them, train it for them. And, and they just they just sort of come into review sessions with us. So there's different types of services and service providers and can do this sort of different levels that you will need for your business. Um, and so again, it's just allowing you time and how much budget you've probably got um, to be able to do that. Um, and then also consider, like, so we've talked about live chat, we've talked about chat box, which is when they answer the question. Um, but I wanted to make um, you aware that there's difference between a fully autonomous chatbot and a hybrid chatbot. So if you look at um, a little, if you think of a um, fully autonomous means the chatbot just answers there, there's no one ever behind the scenes answering answering these uh, your customer questions because the chatbot's doing it all. But um, a lot of businesses that we work with like the hybrid approach, whereas the chatbot will answer their frequently answer, asked questions really well, but they want to, and, and a chatbot's never going to be answer, uh, able to answer all of your questions. There is going to be a percentage of them that just will never be able to be answered. And so um, a lot of businesses choose to then divert the ones that can't be answered to a live staff member. So that's what we, we, we us at Yonder just call hybrid chatbots, whereas um, a live person can actually take over and start a conversation with your website visitors um, at any time. But the chatbot's done some of the stuff to start with and some of the real basic information gathering or telling to start with. Um, so that's just something to consider and keep in mind. So you can do the live chat, but have a little bit of automations in there. Um, and set realistic expectations. So um, yeah, not... Um, the really good ones, real good chatbots. And um, if you think of, yeah, in New Zealand have got, I, I heard someone say to me um, that they've got five technicians um, sitting behind the scenes running their one Oscar. Um, but that's not realistic for most businesses. And they get between uh, up to about an 85% success rate answering everyone's questions. Um, at Yonder, because of our library of data, we get between 70 and 85% of our customers get um, all the answer, questions answered. But just be um, aware, as I've said just before, that they, they won't be able to answer everything, um, especially if people write a big, long, um, detailed paragraph, then that's where they, they will struggle. Um, and so there does need to be, it goes back to having that person nominated just to see what's happening and to tweak it perhaps if, if need be. Okay, um, you guys haven't asked any questions yet. I'm either doing a poor job or talking too fast or <laughs> or not, but never mind. <laughs> no, it's actually really good, Leticia. Okay. <laughs> it's not a poor job at all. Folks are I, tuning in. I, was a bit I usually have lots of questions by now. so I'm I like... know, I know, but I can see them sitting there watching. So we're really just watching. It's all good. <laughs> okay, sweet. <laughs> good to know. Um, so I'm just going to touch on and I'm going to go through, I need to keep an eye on my time time so if I start getting faster just slow me down again guys but um I wanted to consider the pros and cons of live chat because um yeah I'm I can see there's so many um pros and cons for each of the live chat and chat bots and it's just about finding the one for your business um so the main one that is a big pro for um live chats is that there are many free options available or inexpensive options so low cost options available on the market by a multiple number of software providers um yonder like any other software uh, many of the other software businesses offers live chat as part of their free pack plan or pack within their free plan or package um so the range of features you get with your live chat um, widgets is what live chat widgets is what we call them um, can vary based on software provider so again just do your research and find out what it is and keep in mind that Facebook Messenger also have the ability to put their chat widgets onto your your website as well it's just another option um, the live chat widgets are usually pretty easy for your staff to get their head around or for you to get your head around and use. So most platforms look similar. This is a Yonder dashboard, but most platforms will look similar to this. Whereas on the left-hand side, you have all your customer conversations coming in. 
in your middle panel, you will have all your, your actual conversation that you have open, which is this one. So for example, this one's open. So this is what you can see. And on the right hand side, you'll have the customer information. So where they, where they are based, what device they're on and what, where they've been on your customer or on your um, website. So this information actually becomes really important, especially if you're chatting to them live, you can actually see where they've been on your website before you sort of start that conversation and be able to say, oh, I see that you've been on this page already. Is this like, was the information not available on this page? Or um, if you go back to this page, you will find what you're looking for. So that's the sort of, that's the layout that is pretty basic and any biz and, and yeah, it's just common, commonly um, pretty standardized and it's easy for people to pick up. Um, another pro of live chat is that they are really personalized. Um, so they are, that they're like a conversation and a lot of people call them in a lot of platforms. If you're looking at where their live chat widgets are, they'll call them um, conversational marketing. So it's, um, you're meeting the expectations by just answering them and, and, and it's very personalized. So I would um, say if that was really important to your business and you can man them, then, then by all means do it. But make sure again, going back to what I thought I, I reminded you before, make sure you've got the right person answering it um, and, and do it. Do it. Um, another pro of live chat is that it does boost your website sales and appointments. We have so many um, examples of how it has increased website conversions. Um, and I would say on average, um, any business that uses, um, say, on this chat, 10% of their conversations will go through and make a booking. So you just need to work out that. Um, and then if you want to work out how many people actually chat to you with the live chat widgets, we find, well, in tourism, we've got the number of between one and 2% of your website visitors. Um, in other businesses, it's roughly, in other industries that we've worked with, it seems to be exactly the same as well. But it's, it comes down to the quality of those conversations and the leads that you get out of them. They're, they're very much in the buying or planning buying stage um, when they are contacting you on those on those um, things. Sorry, I'm just going to go back. Oh no, I'm going to go forward a little bit because the other bonus and the other pro to um, to live chat, and I it's the same for chatbots. So is your customer data, and um, and Yonder's really big on customer data and being able to gather as much as you can from it. Now these are just snapshots of all of them, so it's a little bit of a terrible slide. Sorry guys. Um, but I just wanted to give you an overview of the kind of data that you can start to get from your, your live chat or your chatbots. So I'll say it here so I don't have to say it in the pros of the chatbot side of things, but um, you can pick out such rich data. So um, how, what, what are your top questions that people are asking on your website? And what is that saying about your website? whereabouts on your website are they getting stuck so what pages are they asking these questions on and then what about those what is it about those pages and what's missing from those pages that you can start to add to your website to actually improve your website performance um, the other one we've got um, is when people are planning and booking things so start looking at when your chats come in what time of the days so um, google will give you the data on um, website visitors and when they're coming to visit, but that may be slightly different to when they're actually in that booking stage. So are they exploring or are they, so this data sort of gives you that more granular into one well, in actual fact, when are these people needing these answers by? Um, and so it just gives you a much broader or better understanding of your customers and what they're thinking when. Um, and then you can even dive into like questions. So operating questions. So like, what is it about my operations that they're asking me? Or it could be, what is it about my service that they're really confused about or they need confirmation about? And that's when you go back to your website and you start making changes. Or we know lots of people that have actually, um, what have they done? Uh, lots of people that have gone through and just put more information on their websites to say, oh, this is, this is it. And, and then the question doesn't get asked again. So that's a really good measure too. So if you get asked lots of questions on your live chat or your chatbot, and then you make changes, then go back and check that those changes actually worked because um, that's what we've found. 
And then we've got lots of people that actually use that data to make blog articles. So it helps them with their media and know what their, um, their content needs to be like, which is quite helpful. Um, so that's a little bit of the, the pros of live chat. So some of the cons of live chat or things that you guys just keep in mind when you're, when you're doing a live chat um, is a huge one um, is the cost. I mean, no, staff time and interruption, sorry. So um, we've done research that shows that a quick conversation on live chat can take up to five minutes or uses approximately five minutes of staff time. So you need to be aware that um, this is this is something that will a interrupt your staff if they're doing something else, and then it does take up time. And depending on the number of conversations you see through your live chat, will depend on the number of people that you need to have nominated to oversee it. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. Another disadvantage of live chat is often they're not staffed or it's out of business hours or um, some businesses we know the staff just, I don't know if it's on purpose or not, but they just forget to turn the live chat on. So um, they just carry on with their work day and, and they don't man it. Um, so again, um, yeah, it's really important that if you've got live chat that, you are, um, that you've got someone that is answering it during your work hours and out of hours that you have something set up that gives people the expectations of what to do or when they can expect you to get back to them. Um, and then again, it's the incorrect staff members are manning the live chat. Um, so answering these live chat immediately, I can't stress enough how important that is. Um, and so, and again, I'm gonna reiterate, you've got that one minute to answer them. So please just find staff that are really responsive and, and that can do it. That may not be sitting behind the phone or at the customer service desk, because if they're answering the phone or facing someone and answering them um, face to face, then they're not going to be able to jump on and answer a chat straight away as well. Um, so we just, yeah, just got to make sure that you, you find the right balance there. Um, and so the pros of a chat bot. So some of these are the same as live chat. Some are a little bit different. So um, the biggest pro for a chat bot that we have seen in businesses and we hear about it all the time is the immediate customer service. Um, now that goes back to why the why, which is what I first started is, is that um, why are people wanting live chat and chatbots is because of the immediacy and the digital side of things. So that is really important. Chatbots do um, cater to that really well. Um, they work 24 hours a day and they don't sleep or take holidays. Um, they save staff time. So I've just said to you that that one of the cons of live chat is it takes up around five minutes per, per chat for, for, per person. Um, with chatbots, you can actually save quite a bit of staff time um, as well as saving staff time answering live chat. They do reduce and majority of businesses that Yonder um, produces chatbots for have seen a reduction in emails and phone calls. Don't stress out. It's not lots of phone calls that you miss and you miss out on all that and personal interaction, which is really important, but it's enough that they notice it, that they take away those, um, I don't want to offend anyone, but annoying questions or um, silly questions that some people ask businesses that they get a bit frustrated with. So in that respect, businesses just love them. Um, some people, um, and more so today than ever, when they look at digital, is that chatbots are becoming sort of like a long-term solution for businesses um, that maybe have a high staff turnover or are struggling to find staff. And so there is a, need, a, a lack of having to train a person to answer these frequently asked questions coming through your business because a chatbot's always going to be there um, answering it for them. And um, depending on what type of chatbot it is, whether it's continuously learning or not, they can actually, they do get smarter over time as well or have the possibility to. So they become a real asset for your business. Um, and then again, they boost website sales and appointments and customer data are the two pros that um, is the same for live chat as well. Um, and their live chat, there's not much difference. We, we haven't seen much difference between sales with live chat versus chatbots. Um, if anything, chatbots are a little bit more smoother in there where they send people to to make the booking, whereas with live chat, it's usually over online um, back and forth for the person. Um, and that sometimes creates more work for the staff members at the back. So just keep that in mind. Customer data, 
it's all there sitting there ready for you guys to use to boost your website performance basically in business. Um, we've had some businesses that have used their customer data to actually um, new, create new products because some of the questions coming through will be like, do you offer this service? And they'll, ha they'll have to say no. But if it's asked so many times, you have that data in your chat system to prove that it's asked. And so you can actually make an informed business decision. So these questions might've been coming through on the phone already, but how often do your phone or the people that answer the phone record these questions for you? So um, just keep that in mind that it picks up those little sort of things that, um, that um, sometimes aren't captured by customer service teams. Um, and the cons of chatbots. So um, if you're considering them, I, I'm not going to lie, they are more expensive than live chat options. Um, you need to, and they and the different costs as well. So logic driven or menu driven chatbots versus AI chatbots. Um, there's a price difference between them. And then, but it, you've also, hopefully you've had a little bit of awareness today about the difference in um, quite like difference in types of what, of what they do can do for your business. So you just need to weigh up the, the cost. And then that's why I was so um, keen for you guys to focus on the ROI or how, what does success mean for you, for your chatbot? And how will you then justify the cost of it? Um, so yeah, do again, do your research. There is a wide range of um, chatbot options up there. So for example, and I can give you an example of Yonder's, our, our chatbot um, packages start from 150 a month on a subscription, on a monthly subscription and go up from there. And it's all based on how clever they are, how smart you want them, how much, like yeah, lots of things that come into play. So just do your research. Um, and also time. So allow yourself time to do it. They aren't, um, yet some of them are bang in and away they go and they're awesome to start with. Um, I'd like to say Alza, but um, you need to allow yourself time to train your chatbots and to get them up to a stage or, or just even if you've done logic based and they don't need training, but there might be a logic that's missed or you, um, you, one of the menus isn't quite right or leading them somewhere. So just give yourselves time to, to get it right and to, and to nominate a person that will look at it and study it and make sure that it's actually doing what you wanted it to do and hit those goals. Um, and then the last one, and it's not a con, but it's maybe something you just need to think about. Um, it's Is it suitable for your customers? Chatbots aren't um, suitable for every customer. Some will get, um, or, and I'm, you might be thinking of, like they've come amazing in a couple of years' time. They're like really good now. But if you think five years ago when you tried to use a chatbot and you'd nearly want to throw your computer out the window because it just drove you nuts and it just wouldn't do what you wanted it to do. So um, there is that little bit of stigma attached to them still from some, some users. Um, that is definitely diminishing and, and the quality of the chatbots have improved substantially over the last few years. Um, but yeah, it, you just need to know your customers and what's going to suit them. And so and so that was that was my um I think I'm I'm on time in a moment. But um that was my um sort of overview of live live chat versus chatbots. Um, and I just wanted to touch base on, on these three points, which is consider your goals before deciding on live chat or chatbots. Um, consider what you want it to achieve for your business. Um, think about who's going to be responsible for overseeing the tool um, and please nominate someone that you know will, will keep an eye on it, even if, it, if it's live chat or chatbot. And then measure the success of it to ensure you've got an ROI for your business. Um, and it's just measure, measure, measure. Um, yeah, I hope that I haven't had any questions. I know, and there's still no questions because I've been checking. Oh my gosh. I've, even, I've even written, I've even um, wrote in the thing. Do you have questions? Like, let me know if you have any questions. Yeah. But there's no questions, but um, it's perhaps they're typing now. So we'll okay. give a moment, I'll <laughs> waffle on. But you know, what I find really interesting about this is I actually hadn't really although I recognize the difference, I hadn't really thought about the fact that they are so different and they really, really are. Um, yeah. Yeah. And the capabilities of your staff or, you know, what's what you actually have time to do is yeah. really an important factor in the way that you deliver this customer experience, because, uh, you know, you could do some damage if you, if you don't do it correctly, you know? Yeah. 
I, and I think that I think in a couple of years ago there was a bit of damage done to some people's ex- customer experience around using these sort of tools, whereas they're mm-hmm. definitely being used now more and more, and we're seeing that through our system. Yet um, it's about providing a good customer service, so it's yeah. about knowing your business, setting those goals, and making sure it's the right system for your business, basically. I actually loved that insight because I didn't really consider that as well. I just thought, oh, that's just an access point. That's just a touch point. But no, it can be so much more. And especially chatbots can be used in such a plethora of ways, you know, collecting information really from your guests. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So some of our businesses just purely use it as a a lead gathering um, tool. So they will, uh, but they want to ask more questions in a conversational way to gather that information so it still gives that personalized touch but doesn't feel and doesn't feel like robotic but mm-hmm. still gathers that information so that they can provide that customer service so it's, it's just a it's just a, a very individualized business so I tried to make it as broad as possible today to sort of cover multiple businesses to say there's no one fits all it's all about knowing your business and customers well you definitely did that and <laughs> you know I will I will say that I'm a big fan of of chat bots and ch- live chats i honestly mm-hmm. it just gives you those access points yep. where you don't have to scan where's the contact page where's the email yep. you know and send an email it's just so much more immediate even if they ask me for my email if i yep. really have a question i'm actually really happy to give that to them yep. to know that i don't have to think about it now they're going to get back to me you know yeah, and that's and off think, my plate yeah and i think that's it and you'll be surprised how many uh, businesses have said to us they get a bit they're funny they're like that person asked this question and the answer's on the page that they asked the question. And we're like, well, that's because customer expectations are changing. They don't expect to have to read a bunch of writing on a page to get mm. their answer. They just want it immediately. And so they'll use the chat to do it basically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it does, it does frustrate the business sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And so me too. <laughs> yeah. I might, you know, I mean, I, back in the days where people be like, it's on the website, it's on, they email you the questions it's on the website. You don't have to deal with those emails anymore. You yep. can fix that. with yeah, a yeah. Chatbot, yeah. You know? Cause exactly. that is probably spending 50% of your day mm-hmm. answering questions that are already on your yep. website, you know, is possibly the most, you know, time consuming yep. and it's ineffective very- way. <laughs> frustrating yeah. Yeah. yeah that's very good yes there's a comment here from dean thanks so much dean it says this is a big presentation i plan to use chatbots and it's great to know hybrid combination are a thing mm. yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. i think yeah i think lots of this. people don't realize that actually so it's really mm. important i think that that's why i sort of dropped it in because i think that's a really cool feature yeah. to be able to do And another comment here coming in from Facebook, great presentation, have been using Messenger, but your dashboard with the data looks a great addition. We'll get in touch with you. Awesome. That's fine. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I was trying to pick out, like, it's not just our dashboard, but it's like, you just need data, like more customer data, the better. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the more information you have, the more you can cater to your your people. Yeah. 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 And improve your website. So it's just, yeah. (sighs) I'm loving this. I'm excited. I'm excited for Digital Boosters. I got to see this. There were a lot of people tuning in from social media. So if you're tuning in on the go, I know that a lot of people do that because, you know, they're doing other things. They're dry, you know, well, hopefully you're not driving, but you know what I mean? You're, it's easy to get on social media instead of possibly Zoom. So if you do have questions that you didn't get answered, contact Letitia. She'll be able to answer them regarding this. Yonder, um, I guess traditionally kind of worked in what more of a tourism kind of system, but has been moved into like so many business reference. We had chatted about a hair salon that's picked it up for their booking systems. It just has so many features. Your, you know, everything that you guys do is all about feedback so that you can grow your business. That's what I understand it as. Yep. Yeah. So, it's just customer data to grow your business. And it's just the tools to help boost it and use that customer data mm. wisely. Mm-hmm. And I like that you're, you know, you're really personable. You'll actually have a chat with somebody. So do take advantage of that. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, 
just want to say thank you again, Leticia, for coming on. I'm looking forward to your future session on the 24th. We're bumping that. We were going to hold it on the 17th or 18th, and it'll be moving back a week to the 24th. So if you're registered for that event already, you will see that that will be shifted shortly. The content will be the same. Um, we are always happy to have you on here. You are a true expert. In it's always fun. Experience. I love helping businesses. So yeah, do reach out if you've got questions or you need a hand or something. Woohoo! Have a great Monday. What a great way to start the week. Thanks so much. You've given me so much energy. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Ka kite, and I will see you all.